just crack on, mate. Um, just crack on. Good evening, everyone. Hands up if you can hear me. Jolly good. If you can't hear me, then it's your end, so I don't give a shit. Uh, right, tonight, we are very briefly going to be talking about a LinkedIn battle plan. Because it's a big thing. Um, a lot of people are pissed and moaning about it. People are pissed and moaning about a lot of things, to be honest. Um, but it's also extremely important because sometime in the next, I don't know, ooh, three, four weeks, this lockdown thing is probably going to be somewhat attenuated. Um, they're going to be lifting restrictions and people are going to start moving, which is pretty much what I predicted all along. Now, what's going to happen, I suggest, is, um, or I suspect, turn that heater off. Too hot in here. Hottest thing in here should be me. Um, what's going to happen is, you're going to, on the one hand, you're going to have a lot of people who suddenly want to uh, get work done for them, like clients and the like. On the other hand, you're going to have a lot of people coming into the market who want to do work for people. And of course, some people will want both. Now, because things have been locked down for a long while, um, oh, there's people waiting to get in still, useless bastards. Um, because people have, been, people have been locked down for a long while, everything's going to have to be done yesterday. They're all going to want it as fast as possible. And because, um, because they're going to have issues with cash flow, some of these people, everyone's going to be looking for a decent price. Now, from the sales point of view, because they haven't been working for probably I don't know, six, seven, eight weeks, maybe more, um, they're going to want work at any, car, any price um, without counting the cost of doing that. So what you're going to have is a is massive fucking mosh pit of buyers and sellers, um, and everyone's going to be emotionally fraught because um, everyone that's going to have this thing in the head about my business is dead. So, you know, I will just take anything that comes along. I'll pay anything. I'll do anything. I'll, I'll suffer any indignity just, just to get things moving again. And one of the worst things you can ever do at any point in time is make uh, important decisions in the grip of any strong emotion, good or bad. This is why when you go to these events and things, people will try and whip you up into a, an emotional hype because they want you to buy their shit and because they really what they're trying to do is to get you to suspend your critical thinking. Okay. Um, they're mad, not stupid, these people. So what it does is I need to turn this fucking thing off because um, what's happening is people are queuing up. So if I just turn off the waiting room then people should just get in marvelous. So, that's what's going to happen. And now whether it happens in four weeks or six weeks or even eight weeks, it doesn't matter, but that will happen when the market starts to open up. Okay. So the, the time to be doing stuff about this is, well, really the best time to have been doing it was several weeks ago, but because most of you haven't fucking bothered to do that because you've all been sitting there going, Oh, this is so awful. What we're going to do. The best time to start is now because what you do not want to be doing is going into this mosh pit with no plan, no idea what you're doing, no pipeline filled, um, and, and trying to do 20 different things at once and having all this emotional angst going on like you neurotypicals do, and just basically selling yourself cheap, um, getting the shittiest people you possibly could ever find anywhere because everyone else is tightening up. It's just going to be horrible. The time to sort this out is right now. Okay. Now I'm going to talk about LinkedIn specifically because for us and for a lot of people, probably, probably anyone selling B2B, um, and even people selling B2C because with a, with a user base of well over a billion, your customers are on LinkedIn and it's just a matter of whether you can reach them, how you can reach them and how well you can communicate with them. So you, no matter what you're doing, it's almost certain your target market is on LinkedIn. If it's not, well, what I'm about to share with you will pretty much apply anywhere anyway, um, apart from the obvious specifics. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is, is just quickly go over the, the LinkedIn strategy we've been using for a some time now and it, it's been getting us steady leads high quality um very little engagement which i should come to in a little while because i'm not a big fan of engagement for its own sake um and you want to be doing this now because we've been doing it 
throughout this entire lockdown, we've been steadily getting good leads, higher quality than we've had before. We've been closing clients. Um, we've not seen any real difference in our business um, other than improvements. Um, and for me personally, it's been blissfully quiet when I go into town and, and occasionally venture into the shops. So I'm actually quite loving the dystopia. Um, and I think we should have plagues more often. Um, I think that would, I don't think most people would like that, but I certainly would. So that's where we are right now. And so what I'm going to show you tonight is just a very simple way you can uh, start to fill your pipeline through LinkedIn without having to worry about what's going to happen in three to six weeks time. Okay. And the time to start doing it is right now and not in three to six weeks when things are turned, well, well, things start kind of loosening up. In the same way as when you have a baby or your wife has a baby or your girlfriend has a baby, <coughs> you don't wait until the damn thing arrives and you're holding this squealing, squalling shit machine uh, before you start painting the nursery, buying toys, buying clothes, buying car seats and the rest of it, all right? You, you prepare in advance, um, unless you're completely in denial um, anyway. So the traditional way of, of getting business on LinkedIn is to post a lot of stuff, meaningless, inane, nonsensical stuff, except pretty any, anyone who, who makes a connection because there's this feeling going around that, hey, anyone could become a client. Well, that itself is a fucking mistake anyway. Anyone could become a client. Um, you never know who knows whom. Uh, and it's all about engagement. It's all about relationship. It's all about getting to know people, developing liking and trust and knowing, um, and then maybe doing some business with them. So what people do is they, they write stuff to get engagement. Um, and we're talking about likes, shares, comments, and views. Well, views aren't really engagement. Well, they are of a kind. Um, depends how LinkedIn's choosing to, to count views. If it means if you click on something, that is in a form of engagement. The problem with engagement is this. One is it's very slow for the most part, okay? It's also very inefficient because it's slow, right? It can take you months, weeks, possibly years to turn someone into a client. Um, I'm not saying it doesn't work because it does. It clearly works because people get business from it. I mean, and I've done the same kind of thing myself with long email sequences and people have joined my list and maybe bought a book and then three, four, five years later, they turn up to an event that's 2,000 pounds. So, you know, this long nurturing does work, but it's also possible to get someone from going from cold to sold, as in they've never heard of me before in their lives, to giving me you know, 10,000 pounds more, um, you know, five figure investment in my products or services within the space of two or three days um, of knowing me. So, you know, you don't, you, you can form an adequate relationship in, involving trust and knowing and liking rapidly enough without all this need to post about your favorite ice cream um, and your sister-in-law's new hat. You just don't need to do it. There's also a few other insidious things about engagement, apart from it being slow and inefficient and largely untargeted well it is targeted but what you're doing is this the, the kind of engagement what what you do is you write posts to get an engagement by engagement it means you you elicit a, a reaction from someone else but what you're actually doing if you think about it is you are writing your posts and providing your your insights and your material in a way which you over time modify to elicit an opinion from your audience and you bow to their opinion tacitly you are in effect changing what you do in response to their opinion. Well, for the most part, these people are unqualified. You know, if, you do, if you're not discerning about whose connection requests you accept, you could be getting requests from you know, people all over the world, from all different cultures, different businesses. So you can have anyone on your list from freelancers to people who build bridges, to consultants, to healthcare practitioners, to retarded anti-vaxxers and all the rest of it. And what you're doing is your, your, your behavior will become some kind of average of all the opinions these people express. Worse than that, you'll start to build yourself an echo chamber. And we've, we've seen the danger of this, and I'll explain that in a minute. But you build an echo chamber because what you're doing is people who see your material about, I bought this kind of ice cream, dropped it on the floor, my child had a tantrum, and I dealt with it in this way. What do you, when your children have tantrums, the kind of people who want to read and respond to that kind of stuff, well, that's the, that's the audience you're going to build. It's an echo chamber, all right? And it, it, it is more complex than that because you'll get a more complex echo chamber because if you, if you vary what you write. But in, a sense, in essence, that's what you're doing. You're creating an echo chamber of people with roughly similar outlooks, roughly, roughly similar values, roughly similar, similar opinions of virtually everything, except the one thing 
you really care about and that's your fucking business all right so why is that dangerous well apart from the fact it, that's another reason it's inefficient that's dangerous because not only are you modifying your opinion and behaviors and the way you present yourself to placate a largely irrelevant and uninformed crowd of people because you know if you've got connect i've seen it before a, a lady who's she's a linkedin coach one of those people um she's not bad but you know not my cup of tea but the more pointless she put her prices up and there was a couple of airline pilots on in her echo chamber who were saying she was charging too much and offering their opinion and this stupid woman engaged these people within an argument well you know if you've got an in-flight emergency then they're the guys you really want to talk to because they can fly airplanes but when it comes to setting your prices as a consultant or something like that, why the fuck would you ask these people? Why the fuck would you listen to them when they give you their opinion and ask for? It's fucking madness. But she reaped what she sowed because that was the echo chamber she built. Now, what we've seen recently, and we have seen, well, I've seen this and others have too, okay? The day before all the lockdown started and before the rumblings and the, the, the shit show started, people were posting all this stuff and they were talking about likes and engagements and everyone was, was happy, everything was rosy in the garden. Then all of a sudden there's lockdown, businesses shut, um, freelancers lose all their clients, in some cases literally overnight, um, and everything grinds to a halt. So what do these people do? They got on Facebook and they uh, on LinkedIn and say, my business is shit, I've lost all my clients. I'm really sad. I'm fucking sick and tired of being at home with my children. What about you? Oh yes, I'm sick and tired of being at home with my children too. And all of a sudden, all these people who were talking about abundance, and gazing into their navels and love and light and fucking unicorn farts and that kind of thing. All of a sudden, they all descended into this soggy biscuit circle jerk of misery and despair. And that no one's doing any work and they're all pissing and moaning. I mean, never mind the fucking irony these people are saying about how much they love their children and how they treasure time with their family. And five days later, they want to fucking string the kids up from the nearest lamppost by the testicles. And light a fucking fire underneath them. I mean, I felt like that about my kids right from day one, to be honest, and I told them this. I actually told my children, they're grown up now, but I told them if they get coronavirus, don't tell them because they didn't want you anyway. And it does make a nice change from telling them that I wish they'd been a wank in the shower. For some reason, they still adore me, and which drives my ex mad because she can't understand how I can be so awful to them, and yet they still love me. Probably some kind of fucking Stockholm syndrome, you know? But anyway, that's, that's an aside. But that's why the traditional way of doing business on LinkedIn, in my opinion, I won't say it's ineffective, but there are better ways of doing it. It's flawed. It, and it, it's, it's flawed in so many ways. I don't know why anyone would want to do it. But still, I will, you know, sometimes engage people in discussion on this and they will tell me, oh, you've got to get engagement. No, you haven't. Here's why. And, I, you know, I've got facts. I've got a paper trial if I need it of invoices and, and, and posts. You know, I, I could put together a fucking case if I wanted to showing them that people will go from cold to sold on a five-figure investment in two to three days, having never heard from you before. And they'll still argue with me. It's like arguing about whether the fucking sun rises in the morning, you know? It's, it's, it's crazy. But take it from me, you don't need engagement. You don't need all this nonsense. It works, but there are better ways of doing it, okay? And that's what I'm gonna share with you tonight. We've got about 20 minutes now. So, <clears throat> that's engagement. Now, the alternative is very simple. Right now, the strategy I use um, is quite simple, and that is my whole. And I'll talk about exactly how I implement it in a moment. But at a higher level, the abstract level, what I do is I focus on problems. Okay, and I don't mean to say I'm negative or miserable, but I talk to and about people's problems. Now, in my industry, or sorry, my target market, my target industries, for the most part, which is construction and trades. Although it does actually, most of you people listening to this will, will recognize this because it's endemic everywhere. And that is not enough time and money, not enough for the right kind of clients, inability to sell to them a high enough fee when you do get them. Now, those three problems, they probably apply to 90% of the businesses across the board. So you, everything from solicitors, accountants, healthcare practitioners, consultants, um, photographers, website designers, anyone in the trades, carpenters, brickies, builders, butchers, bakers, carpenter, uh, candlestick makers, whatever, it's always the same, okay? We speak about their problems, those three problems. And we've got a diagram, you may have seen it, I don't have it to hand, but they're along the three circles when they overlap and they've got the thing in the middle, the personal sovereignty, and they, that maps onto the pricing, positioning, and the systems that support it all, which themselves map onto fixing the, 
the not enough for the right kind of clients, inability to sell to them at the right price, and not enough money and time. I maps onto those perfectly. You know, this is not all made up. I don't just pull this out my ass and make it up. You know, I'm not a fucking politician. So we speak about people's problems, and we're relentless with it. I mean, if you go back, if you if you want to take the time, it's up to you. If you don't believe me, but go back over the last probably two, three, four years on LinkedIn. I've been more more prolific in the last what, 18 months, two years. And watch my videos. You, you won't find any contradiction. I may have changed my mind on some things, but I still say so and say, why? Because I follow evidence. But you won't find contradictions. You won't find any mini mouth changing of opinions, changing of, of, of attitude just to suit the crowd. My message is relentless. My message is upfront. My message is always the same because I focus on fundamentals, which is at the root of these people's problems, okay, rather than the tactics of who's got the best ice cream, which is just a tactic, by the way. So I focus on problems. I show I understand these problems. And by showing I understand them, something very strange happens. When you show you understand someone's problem, and I mean you really understand it, I get people on the phone and they've said it to me more than once, fucking hell, you know, it's like you can read my mind. And I'll say, well, yeah, because I know this. I speak to people every single day with the same fucking problem. Not enough time and money, not enough the right kind of clients, the inability to sell to them at a high enough fee when you do find yourself in front of them. It's almost like magic, and because they, 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 they feel lonely and isolated in their businesses, um, and all of a sudden someone understands them. Fucking hell! You know, none of their employees do. Their clients don't care. Their spouses don't really care either. None of their competitors get it. They don't want to talk about that kind of thing anyway, because who, who wants to, to admit to their competitors that things are pretty shit actually? But they tell me like I'm their fucking father confessor or something, and I can read their minds, and they're suddenly, oh my god somebody understands now what's curious is when you understand someone's problem like that to that extent they automatically assume you know how to solve it it's a non sequitur by the way because i mean a good example of this is my mate dev is a cancer surgeon um and we've had this conversation before and you know he understands cancer so you could go to dev with a terrible cancer and say it hurts and he'll say prod 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 and it could wax lyrical about all the biochemistry involved in it and you'll say Oh, thank fuck for that. Great, you understand what's wrong with me. I'll ask somebody knows. So what do we do? And he says, nothing, you're going to die anyway. Right? So you, it, it's a non sequitur to say, just because you understand the problem, you know how to solve it. Okay, but that's what people believe. So speak about the problem relentlessly. Find out what these problems are, obviously. Speak about them relentlessly and show you understand them and people will assume you know how to solve it. And tell them you know how to solve it. But only telling you how to solve it if you actually do. I mean, I don't get up there and say I can solve these problems um, when I can't. This is why we have the phone calls. This is why we have two phone calls. One, Connor gets some, we call it the triage call, because he gets some basic information to see what their problem is. Can we help them? Do we want to help them? Because not everybody we want to help, because some people are just shitbags. We just don't want to bother with them. Um, and then if they can, well, then he hands them on to me and I go through a much more in-depth 45 minute to an hour conversation where I show them how to fix the problems. That's what we do because we understand them and we do know how to fix them. Now, there are people out there who will sell you a solution which is completely irrelevant compared to the problem. These are the people who often put up long copy sales pages um, and every, every nail, every fucking problem is a nail. You know, they've got a hammer and they're going to fucking hit that problem of yours and make it into a nail. That's not what we do. Everything's kind of pretty much bespoke and, and very much, um, very much hands-on in our mentoring group. That's why we are so strict on qualifying people because we don't want people and we can't help. Right? It doesn't serve anyone. It doesn't serve them. It doesn't serve us. It doesn't serve the world at large. We understand their problems. We know how to solve them. So speak about the problem. Show you understand it. Promise you can solve it, but only if you can. Okay? It's not difficult. But to do that, to solve the problem, if you actually want to get these people to come on as clients, you have to do what most people won't do on LinkedIn. And I've got some re some ideas why they don't, why they won't do that. Um, I'll come to in a moment. You got to have have a call to action. Okay, there's no point in knowing how to solve someone's problem and saying you can solve it if you don't. Then say, and if you want me to solve them for you, here's what you do next. And it can be as simple as click on a link for a website. Give me a call if you want to give me your number. I suggest you don't do that. Or a link, they can book a call and then speak to you. Something like that. That's the last, the last way is the way we do it because there's nothing worse than playing 
telephone ping pong with someone. Are you free at seven? No, I'm not free at seven. How about six? No, I can't do six either. You can be there all fucking day. You know, both die of old age before you solve the problem. So we just send people to a calendar, they book a call, we speak to them. We have a call to action every single time. Because if you don't have a call to action, you're not marketing. And this is what we're doing. I know it's a dirty word and people don't like it, but that's what you're doing. And even if you do nothing, you're still marketing because marketing is anything anyone on the outside can see of your business. And if you don't have a call to action, well, why would they act? What they'll do is they'll listen to you, probably get some idea of how you can solve their problem. And, and yeah, this guy's talking sense. I'll go and Google it. Oh, I'll Google it. This guy can do it. That guy's got a call to action. So you do the educating and some other guy gets the business. That's not very clever, is it? Now, I suspect people don't use a call to action for one of two reasons. One is they don't actually know they're supposed to. There's this bullshit notion going around that somehow marketing these days is different. No, it isn't, because we're still selling to human fucking beings. And human beings haven't fundamentally changed. And all these people who think that after the coronavirus has gone away or we've got a vaccine that works, all these people who think we're going to emerge in some fucking new world of Aquarius, well, they are sadly mistaken because we're going to be the same nasty, vicious, spiteful, violent race we've always been. Give it five years, we'll all be a teacher of those throats again. So, call to action. No call to action, it's not marketing. The other reason people don't do it, apart from not knowing they're supposed to, is they're afraid of hearing no. It, it's very comforting to get on LinkedIn or anywhere else and put like shares or, or get like shares, comments and views and, and enjoy yourself and get the feeling you're achieving something. Well, you're not. You go down to Tesco. If you don't believe me, go down to Tesco, get your shopping trolley full, your basket, okay, and say, oh, I ain't got any money, but oh, if you look on LinkedIn, I've got, I've got all these likes, look. They'll tell you to bugger off. You, know, you cannot buy your shopping with like shares, comments and views. You can't, honestly. Try it if you don't believe me. I've, um, but make sure you video it because I want to see it. All right? So, people do that because they're afraid to say, here's what you do. Here's my post. Here's your problem. Here's the solution. I can solve it. Call me. And they're so afraid the phone won't ring. And you know what? Most often it won't. For every, I don't know, my post might get seen by 1,500 people, 2,000 people. I don't know. I don't look. But imagine it gets seen by 2,000 people and no one responds. I don't care. But the people who thrive on likes, likes, comments, shares, and views, oh, they love it. They, well, they'd hate that, but they love, they love the dopamine hit from the, the response they get. They couldn't bear, their egos are so fucking fragile, they could not bear to post something and be ignored. How sad is that? Seriously, are you in business or are you there in a fucking popularity contest? You answer me. Okay, I know what I'm in. I'm in business. I don't give a fuck about being popular, which is probably just as well, John, I hear you say. Right. So that's what we do. And then after you've done the call to action, you get them into a sales process, um, which I'm not going to talk about now because we'll probably do that in a different training um, because it's too involved for the, for the next 12 minutes or so. So focus on problems. Talk about solutions promise a solution, tell them you can solve it and here's what they need to do to get you to solve it for them. Um, <coughs> and then get them into a sales process, which we'll discuss later. We just use two phone calls. Um, the details of those aren't that relevant at the moment, but that's what we do. If you've got a different one, you've got a sales page or whatever it is, fine. But that's what we do. Now you can see the structure to that. It's repeatable and we do repeat it relentlessly. All right, and we don't care about whether it gets liked, shared, commented on, or viewed. Because what we do know is, and I know this from the messages people give me, you know, essentially, John, I really like your videos, we need to talk. Well, you know, I don't care how many people hate me if I've got one person saying that every day, because they're the people who come, become my clients. I don't care about the ones who won't, I care about the ones who will. And all through this shitstorm, we've been taking on clients slowly, to be honest, yeah, but we've still been doing it. And this is a, a serious investment that people are making in, in their future and their business financially and their time. Now, this is not trivial stuff. This is not a $47 ebook people are buying. All right. But it's been working for us and it's working for our clients too. You know, we've got a builder who's just, I was, he closed a million quid's worth of work a few weeks ago to start in May. And financial advisors are taking on 100K lump sum investments that people are putting in. It's working. It works for them too. So, 
that's the kind of over overview of it. Now, how do we do it on a practical level, on a practical day-to-day -day level? I shall go into that now. It's quite simple, really. The first thing you want to think about is your profile. It starts with a picture, okay? You do not need to spend a lot of money on a professionally shot photograph. People who shoot professional photographs would tell you otherwise. It's funny that, isn't it? It may be, it's almost like, right, they want to sell you an expensive photo shoot. Well, you've got a fucking perfectly adequate camera just here, look, on your fucking smartphone. Mine is a selfie, shot at the bottom of the lane. It does me great, okay? And it's got all the important ingredients. It's got me staring at the camera, looking at people. The, the human eye responds to faces. The human eye responds to faces looking out at you, eye contact. Funny, ironically, I don't make eye contact very often with people, um, being autistic and that, but that doesn't stop people looking at me. It's very creepy, I don't know why you do it. Why, why do you do that, by the way? You neurotypicals, you stare into each other's eyes. Stop it, Nick, go away. Um, <laughs> it's really bizarre, but it works. And although you shouldn't really use anyone else's photo, women get looked at by men and women, more than men get looked at by men and women. Um, and babies' faces pull best of all. Not much use, I know, but just an interesting snippet if you're writing copy. So, a face looking out. We, we put a ring around it, very simple to do in Canva or, or Photoshop, and it just means it stands out a little bit. It's not huge. Don't overthink any of this stuff. So you've got a picture. Your tagline, okay? Given your job title, it, it's, it's just a statement, it's meaningless. If you look at my, my tagline, which I can't remember what it is, it's something along the lines of leader of men and women with the balls to take responsibility in whatever it is. Um, your tagline should just telegraph what you do and for whom you do it very quickly. Now, those people always say, ha, 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 everyone's helping someone. Everyone says, I help, ha, ha, but ignore them, okay? If the best, if, if all they've got to do with their lives, you know, their business is turning to shit, they're stuck at home with the fucking children they want to hang from the lamppost and slide the thunder, fire under them. If the, if the best they can do with their time is look on LinkedIn and find fault with your tagline, they really do not have enough going on in their lives and they probably need to masturbate more, okay? They really don't. They do not have enough going on in their lives. It is not your problem and it shouldn't become it. So just ignore them. Make sure your tagline telegraphs what you do for whom you do it. Don't overthink it, but you know, don't be boring either. No point, in no, having, no point in having a fucking list of your qualifications along the bottom. You know, John McCulloch, B.N. Johnner's first class, electronic engineering. Well, why? Who gives a fuck? No? Except me, because I just had to get that one in, didn't I? So, that's your tagline and your picture. Um, your about section should be like a long copy sales letter. Just look at mine, see the way I've done it. It needs a bit of an edit, to be honest. I haven't edited it since. Um, the coronavirus thing kicked off because I've got bigger fish to fry. It's one of those small things that in 80, 20 terms ain't that important, but I, I should be doing it. But that's not the point. Just take your mind back to pre-coronavirus and think, okay, this was written for then. So that's what it reflects. That's the kind of environment it reflects. But it's a sales letter. It's not about me. It's about what I can do for you. Okay. Even on your website, your about me page and about us page should not be a list of photographs and then, you know, I was born at a very young age and then I became a paper boy. Didn't like being a paper boy, so I left school. And then when I left school, I did 17 years as an ice cream salesman. Then I found my passion. Did I tell you I'm really passionate about your business? That kind of fucking inane shit is not good for anyone. It just is pointless. Your about us page and about me page are the same as your about me section on LinkedIn should be not so much about you, but about what you can do for them. As an experiment, try and write it without using the word me, I, our, us, we, at all, okay? So no, um, no first person pronoun, singular or plural. You wouldn't do that in reality because it would look very strange, but it's a good exercise because it forces you to put your mind into the person's place, right, into the person's position. So your About Me page is like a long copy sales letter selling what you do. And it should attract the people you want to work with and just as important and probably more important, push the ones away you don't want to work with. And I say it's more important because any number of good clients are easy to get, easy to deal with, they're great fun. And if one goes, it doesn't matter because you just get another one. Get a shitty client, get a shitty client, it becomes like a stone in your shoe or a hemorrhoid in your ass. You can't fucking ignore it. You cannot enjoy your life when you've got hemorrhoids. So my friends tell me anyway, okay? You cannot be happy with a hemorrhoid. I should trademark that phrase, shouldn't I? So, 
your about me page should be a long copy sales letter. Look at mine, don't steal it word for word because that'd be stupid. But have a look at it, look at the structure, learn to write long copy sales letters. It's just a problem I just take to solve with a call to action on it. It positions me, it attracts the people I want to deal with and pushes away the ones I don't. Right? There are qualifiers in there. And the qualifiers are just simply things that people, you know, criteria people must meet if you want to work with them. So important, you see it sometimes in my posts, okay? We want to work with people with ethical businesses who have a certain income level, well, it's profit level, um, who are committed to doing their work, who, who've got this kind of problem, you know? It's, everything we do is very specific, okay? It's not to get engagement, it's to get fucking clients. Okay, the, the, the two are not mutually exclusive by any means, but if you want to get them quickly, you want to get them higher level, as in high, high paying clients, and you want to get them with minimum of fuss without having to fart around with all this stupidity, that's the way to do it. It's, it's marketing. Writing about your sister-in-law's new hat and what kind of ice cream you might be on a Saturday night is not marketing. It's stupid. It might be entertaining, but it's not marketing. Not really does, I suppose, it's just stupid marketing. Now, the posting strategy we have, um, oh yeah, the, well, the other thing is, there's something called featured posts on LinkedIn. They're fairly new, I believe, or I've just discovered them reasonably newly. Um, and they are just showcases of your, your favorite stuff. Um, I, if you look at mine, there's a strategy to it. I'm not gonna go into it now, it's too much, it's too in depth, we don't have time. But you can use those and you probably should because it's if people look at your profile, it's a good place for you to showcase top quality posts, whether they're videos or images. That's probably the place you wanna, probably the kind of post you wanna put in your featured post because text posts look boring. Something which is eye-catching, an image which actually tells a story, as in with words, not just a picture, um, is a great place, is, is something great to put in your featured posts because it catches the right. People looking at your profile, but the only time they ever see it, that's great and it's permanent too. So that's your featured posts. Now our posting strategy is very simple. I'm not saying it's the best. Um, I couldn't possibly say that because it would be, it, that implies full, full and complete knowledge of LinkedIn, which I don't have obviously. But we find the strategy works very well, and that is we post three times a day, and there's no magic to it, so don't look at my feed and say, well, John posts at 7.38 in the morning, so that's the optimum time. I do it when I can be bothered, okay? I don't even, the order in which I post them is variable too, but I'll do it in a certain order at the moment because it's convenient, that's all, okay? I don't look at it, I don't, I don't try and second guess the algorithm, I just do what works, and if, if there's a better way of doing it, then fine. Okay, but this way works, and so that's the place to start, and then try and improve it yourself. And if you want, you can tell me. If you don't want to, then you don't have to. Okay? But whatever you do, please don't listen to these so-called LinkedIn gurus who claim they know how the algorithm works, and they've done their research, because they fucking haven't. Reverse engineering any algorithm for the black box is a non-trivial mathematical exercise. And I can, I can guarantee Karen, the part-time fucking hairdresser and aromatherapist, LinkedIn fucking good consultant, has not got the mathematical ability to fucking reverse engineer the LinkedIn algorithms. It just ain't gonna happen. Not while my ass has got a hole in it, all right? It's just not. They make this shit up or they just pass it on from someone else. So, anyway, that's a long-winded way of just saying, just post how you feel like. We do three a day. One video, one image, one text, okay? So some people have got a preference for, for reading one thing or watching and some people got a preference for just looking at an image. So get all three. If you want to put uh, captions on your video, then do so. I do sometimes, but you know what? I can't be bothered and I've yet to get anyone to do it for me because it's a long involved process. <sighs> and I just can't, I don't think it's that important. If I do, do it and it works, I'll tell you. Okay, but I don't really care that much. It's one of those things I've got better things, you know, it's not that important to me. Um, it probably is better to use cap captions, but you know, this is small potatoes really, because you're posting every single day. And I get enough people saying that of my videos to think, well, oh, it's perhaps not that important, right? So three a day, um, video, text, image, any particular order, images, do what you like, it doesn't really matter. Um, because the thing to remember is it's just like a bus. There's always another one coming along. The, the, the key to it is consistency. Post every day. Consistency in your message. Keep your message pretty much the same. Keep your values the same. Okay? Don't chop and change because of whims. Don't get upset by people who don't like it um, because you don't want to get that kind of nastiness. So you, you water down your message and end up being nothing to anyone because you're trying to be all things to everybody. Okay? 
consistent message, consistent posting. Don't worry about the small stuff. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat about the, the nasty comments. Don't sweat the fucking video captions. Don't sweat about what time you post or what day you post. Just post seven days a week, three times a day, one video, one text, one image, and you'll get the results you're looking for. I hope you should do. We do. Um, the last thing I want to talk about is uh, adding contacts. Now, the way we add contacts is very simple. You, if, you want to, if you want to pay for a premium thing, what's it called, LinkedIn Sales Navigator, um, what you can do is you can search for contacts like contacts you already have. So what you do is you get your existing clients and search for contacts like them. That's quite effective. Or, and this is what I tend to do, um, some of my best clients, they are very, very active. They get a lot of engagement, even though that's not why they're doing what they're doing. So what I do is I look at their good posts, um, the ones that are, are very on point with my message. I will add something which is equally on point, and I'll go down the list of people who've interacted with that post, um, and I will add them as a contact, because there's an immediate affinity there. They've, they've posted on something which is on point with my message, so my message will be on point with what they're reading, what they're interested in, um, and it works really well. And the guy I'm thinking of, um, he's actually on the call tonight, uh, he has so much interaction, so many contacts. Uh, I can add the 100 or something a day without having to look elsewhere. But if I wanted to, I could go into LinkedIn Navi um, sales navigation and do it that way. All right? So find your, best find your best clients, find people like that. LinkedIn is so huge, there's a, there's a wealth of people out there. So you can afford to be picking. I tend to add people myself only in construction and trades, sometimes manufacturing. I will accept most incoming, unless they're completely fucking in la-la land, you know, mindset gurus or take a holistic approach to vaccine therapy and stuff. Oh, fuck off, go and die. That kind of stuff. The last thing, um, LinkedIn events. I won't talk about LinkedIn events because they're too involved at the moment, but there's a thing called LinkedIn events. They're really powerful. Maybe we'll cover them in a different uh, training. So that really is our LinkedIn battle plan. That's what we do. What I've just shared with you, if you go through it with a, with a note, note, yeah, notepad and pen and do what I told you to do, so you change your message, so you're talking, you know, finding specific problems, maybe three problems, show them you understand it, tell them you've got a solution, relentlessly repeat that over and over again, get them into a sales system, all right? Construct your profile with a decent picture, a decent tagline, an about me section that says something about what you do, as like a sales letter with a call to action in it, Every post has a call to action. Post three times a day, one video, one image, one text. Call to action, repeating the message over and over again. Dis just completely disregard likes, comments, and shares. Okay, even good ones. Maybe if you want to be polite and respond to people, fine. But don't seek them. Okay, become indifferent to their, to their censure and their praise. Yes, Claire, of course you do. She takes notes. Okay. Become indifferent to their praise and their censure. It's irrelevant. Just focus on what you're supposed to be doing. All right? Add contacts, either through Sales Navigator, using the, the like contacts I already have, or like my clients already are, or look at your best clients, see the people interacting with them who are in the appropriate industry, and add those. Yeah? Choose the messages, the on-point messages, and people who are in your target market, add those. And only have people in your target market. Don't have people because they've got a nice face and a nice pair of tits or something like that. All right? Um, and that is about it. It's that fucking simple. Now, I'm sure there's a million one gurus out there who have told me I'm doing it wrong. Well, I invite them to look at my invoices and my bank balance and my clients and ask them whether it works or not because they're arguing about something which is factual. So there's no point. Okay. So engagement works. It's not efficient. It's not as effective as the way we do it, I think. Um, and you are, there's so many problems with it, as I've already said. Now that is it. Got any questions? Oh, the last thing is if you want our one on one help with this, all you've got to do is message us. All right? Go to, um, sorry, not messages, book a call. Go to grow your business fast, all one word, grow your business fast.co.uk forward slash triage, T R I A G E. Okay? Just like they're using hospitals, triage. Because then you have a 15 minute call with Connor and he will decide. On the, on the few questions you ask you, whether we can help you, how we can best help you, and indeed if we actually want to, because you might be a shit bag. Yeah? And if, that, if you get through that, if, if, if he says you're a good fit for that for the next stage, you'll talk to me and I'll go through a battle plan with you, one-on-one, -on -one, much more in-depth than, than this, um, about all aspects of your business, covering the, the three problems you've got, your pricing, your positioning, your 
uh, systems which map onto your lack of decent clients in the right numbers, not enough time and money, and inability to sell them at a decent price. Okay, that's entirely up to you. Otherwise, just take this and run with it in the next three weeks. Okay, because if you don't do it now, it's going to be too late. And that last point was, should you include phone number as a call to action? No, I wouldn't personally, simply because, um, unless you're the kind of person who enjoys being called at all hours of the day and night by people who just want to waste your time, then no, you don't want to leave a phone number there. Nobody calls me without an appointment, okay? They go into Calendly, they pick a time and a date, and then we speak. All right, even my fucking wife and kids do not call me on the phone without an appointment. My wife doesn't even come into the office without an appointment. She'll knock on the door and wait, and often gets told to go away. Don't tell her I told you that. But no, do not leave your phone number. And when people message you as they will, and say, oh, uh, call me and give the number, don't, okay? The first thing you ask them is, well, hang on a minute, before we jump into bed together, I want to know a little bit more about your problem so I can see if I can help you and if I actually want to. That's what I did with a guy I spoke about a minute ago. Um, and he's been with me for, well, coming up for 18 months, more now. Anyway, I'm out of here because I've got dinner to cook. That was Dan Mason to everyone. Dan, you disgusting person. Right, uh, any questions, you know how to get me, either on LinkedIn or in the Facebook group, uh, or email me at John at growyourbusinessfast.co.uk and if you want to do the call with Connor it is growyourbusinessfast.co.uk forward slash triage t-r-i-a-g-e but whatever you do don't do nothing because doing nothing gets no results all right this replay will be up soon wish me luck i've got vegetables to cook in the meantime stay safe stay inside wash your hands and do not shit on your fingers see you later